Hi, in this video we'll look at how we create a Tunnerton assignment and a rubric for the assignment. To create a Tunnerton assignment, first of all, turn editing on. Go to the assessment section of your course or create one and click on add an activity or resource. Make sure you don't select this one if you wish a Tunnerton assignment. This is a Moodle assignment. Scroll down until you see Tunnerton assignment and select that and click Add. So give your assignment a name that will be meaningful to your students. So the same name as you have in your module handbook would probably be best. We'll just put an example name in here. In this uh, box here you can put in some additional guidance for the student and if you wish that guidance to be also seen on the front page of the course then tick this box here. So we have a range of settings here uh, which you can alter to suit your needs. For many of them you can safely accept the defaults so to keep the video brief uh, I won't give chapter and verse at all of them. I'll just go through the options that tend to be the most crucial. Uh, so normally we're looking at the use case of a single essay, a one part assignment. So you normally wouldn't need to change this. Uh, if you're new to using Turnitin and you want to have a multi-part assignment, uh, discuss the pros and cons of that with a learning technologist before going ahead. There may be a simpler way to achieve what you want. Display originality reports to students. Uh, you would normally have this to yes. It's just what it says. The student can see a report of their unoriginal text in their essay. So in most assignments this will be set to yes. The grade display and the other grade settings here can be left as they are on a 1 to 100 scale if it is an undergraduate assignment. If it is a postgraduate assignment, we need to change the following settings. Change the maximum grade here to 16. Change the type to scale and change the scale to the postgraduate scale. One additional thing to change after that is to come down to maximum marks, max marks and change that also to 16. So once you've taken care of that, you need to set up your key dates for the assignment. There are no intelligent defaults here, either on the date or the times, so you'll need to set them up as per the assessment timetable you've decided upon. Your start date and time is when you want to begin allowing the students to submit. Your due date and time is the deadline for the submission and the post date, this is a date when the marking will be released to the students, normally three weeks after the due date. Okay, let's now take a look at some of the key originality report submission options. Decide whether or not you want to allow students to submit late. So you set this to yes if that's the case. Uh, if you allow it, the assignments will be clearly marked as late. Report generation speed, uh, normally the middle option uh, is the most convenient here, which allows students to resubmit until the due date. Indiscriminate submitting, however, is discouraged by a slowdown and turnaround after three submissions. Normally a student shouldn't need more. Store student papers, uh, so the options are uh, no repository or standard repository. You would normally choose standard repository and for the same reason you would normally do a check against papers already in the standard repository because this is the way that Turnitin checks for peer-to-peer -peer plagiarism. 
The exception is if this is a draft essay uh, with a final essay to follow on based on this, in which case uh, you can turn off this setting here and go for no repository, but usually it would be standard repository. Okay, so for the other options, normally the defaults serve well, but choose what you think will be suitable for your own case. You have the option to add a marking rubric to the assignment. We'll return to that shortly. And there are other settings under common module settings, restrict access, but can usually be safely left untouched. So save your settings either uh, using save and return to course, which will show you your assignment link on the course page, or save and display, which will allow you to see the Turnitin assignment dashboard. Uh, this will allow you to see some of the key settings uh, that you have set up and uh, below this line here you will see the, your list of students on your module and it's from here that you'll be marking them when they submit work. So having looked at a standard Turnitin assignment setup, we'll now look at how to add a marking rubric to the assignment. You can provide feedback and a score on the Turnitin assignment without a rubric, but rubrics give you the opportunity to mark the work in a way that more transparently reflects your student marking guide. There's some variation in how you can approach this, but I'll show you the in a hurry method, whereby you can create the rubric and attach it to the assignment in one go. So I'm choosing uh, edit settings here from the Turnitin dashboard, but you could have selected it from the front page of your module too. So just click on expand all and scroll down to grid mark options. The blue grid icon represents Turnitin's rubric manager and you can click here to start creating your rubric. Once Rubric Manager opens, click on Create New Rubric. I'll just put in a fictitious module code here. So you put in, prefix the rubric with your module code for easy reference later. and you can now add your first criterion. Uh, you'll probably be working from a Word document, so just get to your, your Word document. Take note of the percentage for your criterion and just select your descriptor. And then back and turn it in. give it a title, there's a 15 character limit so you really can only put in one or two keywords. Apply the percentage and uh, then underneath that you can paste in your descriptor and just click off uh, to save it. That's your first criterion set up. Second criterion and the rest will be set up in the same way. So I'll pause the video for a moment and add in some criteria. So now I've added a few more criteria. Turnitin by default gives you four boxes, uh, but all you need to do if you require more is to click on the plus sign up here. And you'll see that adds another uh, criterion for you. So you're not limited to a certain number of criteria. You can have as many as you need. And if you find that you've accidentally created one more than you need, then just click on the little trash can in the bottom left there, and that will allow you to delete that. So you'll now check to be sure that they add up to 100%. It shows you down here. And if you're happy with all that, then you're ready to take a look at your scale points. So this is a point where we come up against the fact that you can have flexibility in your marking or you can have a rubric. 
for example, if we were to translate this guide in a very literal way into Turnitin, the lecturer would only be able to give five possible marks for each student. Uh, you can, of course, override the total mark, but that would potentially produce confusion in queries. Also, you have to make decisions uh, about how you translate your ranges into specific marks. Uh, do you want to get out your calculator and calculate exact arithmetic midpoint for each range? Or are you content to use something which is only approximate for ease of use, such as marking this range here at a scale point of 65? So there are some academic judgments to be made. However, one way I think which makes most of these issues go away is simply to introduce more scale points. So for a percentage scale, if you introduce scale points at five points, five point intervals, then you've reintroduced quite a lot of flexibility. So let's look at how we could do that. So the first scale point I'll introduce is for uh, 100. So the, the first box is a descriptor box and the second one is your actual value. And then we'll proceed, as I mentioned, in five point intervals. So next will be So the reason that I'm not using value terms here, like excellent and very good for the descriptors is because Turnitin never allows you to delete a rubric or make any changes to a rubric once it has been used with an assignment. So in keep it in neutral terms, you're hopefully going to avoid having to create a brand new rubric for just a small change. Minor changes could be made in your marking guide document, but that's up to you. So to create further scale points, you just click on the plus sign up here. Okay, so you can see how this works. I'll pause the video now and fill in the rest of the scale points. Right, so I've now introduced scale points ranging from five up to 100 and that's introduced uh, quite a lot of flexibility into the way we'll be able to mark uh, with this rubric. So having done that and then saved it, I've already saved it here. We're ready to go. We can now uh, close Feedback Studio and I've now clicked on that drop down list as you'll be able to and selected that and there it is there. So that's how you create and attach a, a rubric to your assignment. So let's just take a look now at how we score a student paper with the rubric we've just created. So you will click on the pencil to the right of the student's name. This will open the Feedback Studio. Click on your rubric icon and you'll see a set of sliders for each criterion so just move them along to the appropriate place you can see even with a 20 scale points it's very easy to do and then click on apply to grade and that will push up to the top here the total score for the student if it's an undergraduate assignment, it will be out of 100. If it's a postgraduate assignment and you've set it up correctly, as I demonstrated earlier, then it will be out of 16 here, regardless of the fact that your rubric scoring might be out of 100. This should be showing 16. If it's a postgraduate assignment and it is not showing like this, then uh, stop marking and recheck your assignment settings. And if you're unsure how to proceed, uh, contact your campus learning technologist. So let me just show you the alternative way of doing marking here. Uh, I think most people find the slider uh, very easy to use, but you can click on this expander 
icon here and that will open up a grid of squares and you can just click on a square basically to apply a mark the square will turn blue when you've applied your mark so that is an alternative way of marking here just be careful if you use this method you, you do need to click apply to grade to save your marks when the button goes grey then you can safely close the window okay so you can also leave additional text feedback by clicking on the pencil icon here you have a text box for further comments and you can leave some audio comment here up to three minutes long additionally as many of you know you have uh, the method here of applying in situ annotations to the student paper using the quick mark system we won't demonstrate that here though okay so once you've saved your mark you can click up here to just close the tab and back at the, the the grading table here you would obviously have all of your students in here you will see the mark you've just applied and if it's a postgraduate assignment you will also see the official postgraduate grade so we've now covered setting up your Tunnelton assignment, creating a rubric, attaching it to your Tunnelton assignment, and marking student papers with the rubric. Hopefully this is enough to get you started using Tunnelton assignments and rubrics. If you have any further queries, contact your campus learning technologist.